In my last video, I played against the luckiest person I will probably ever face. If you haven't seen it, please give it a watch. It's only a few minutes and it's mind-blowing. Seriously, a game like this is once in two lifetimes. It's so crazy. In this video, I'm going to be doing more elaborate calculations to determine how lucky he actually was and explain my considerations for the odds shown in the other video. This is not a calculation of just how unlikely this game was. The unlikelihood of a game is a bad way to calculate how lucky someone is because any game with a lot of random factors is fundamentally going to be unlikely, but that doesn't mean that someone was lucky. And yes, sometimes I will be factoring in things that just don't matter at all. And this is because, well, if you lose, nothing matters. And if you win, really only a few rolls probably matter. So I'm just going to count basically everything. Except for damage rolls. In case you didn't know, moves do not deal the same damage every time. They can do a little more or a little less depending on your luck. I will point out when damage rolls matter in this game, but I will not include them in the calculation because it would just be way too tedious. I will, however, include the lack of criticals at the end, a factor not present in the meme video. The meme video is set up in a way where my accuracy luck and his accuracy luck are displayed separately. I wrote mine as a chance to be at least this lucky, but I never miss, so the words at least don't actually matter for me. You cannot be more accurate than I am. Ironically, the words at least are actually an important distinction for both of his values, but I didn't want to crowd the center of the screen. His other category is the secondary effect odds, which is actually just the odds of him being at least this lucky with everything else, but I just called it secondary effect odds because I'm usually counting the secondary effects of his attacking moves. Explaining how the accuracy is calculated is actually very simple as there's only one miss in the entire video. We take the odds of each hit happening and multiply it as a decimal. So if the odds are 70% chance of one hurricane hitting, the odds of 2 are 0.7 times 0.7, and then so on for each hit, also represented by 0.7 to the power of the number of times he hits, which happens to be 7 times. After all the hurricanes, he will have a value of 0.0823543, or a chance of about 8.2%, and we'll deal with the miss when we get to it. For now, let's look at confusion odds. He inflicts confusion 3 out of the 4 times it is possible with Hurricane. The probability of him inflicting confusion 3 times consecutively is easy. It's 30% each time, so like the Hurricane situation above, we simply do 0.3 to the 3rd power. That gives us 0.027, or 2.7%. But he didn't get lucky on the last hit, so his odds should actually increase. Wouldn't it be so simple if I could just multiply 0.027 by 1.3? Sadly, we can't do that, as we're treating every instance of confusion as equally lucky, as opposed to the multiplication method, which would find the likelihood of this particular circumstance or better. We want any circumstance that is the same or better. So this probability calculator will help us out here in doing the math. Let's first insert four values of 70%. That is the chance that we don't get confused. Then, we look at the odds of exactly one of these events occurring. That's our odds of getting confused thrice, 7.56%. You might wonder why I'm doing this kind of backwards using 70% and 30%. This is because there's an option on the calculator for exactly one of these events occurring, but there is no option on any internet calculator I can find that is exactly three of these events occurring. I guess that type of question doesn't show up on people's math homework, so they didn't bother including it. Fortunately, this yields the same result for us, but we aren't quite done. This is how lucky he got, but we want to know at least how lucky he got. Given that there's only one other better circumstance, this is pretty easy to find. The odds of him confusing me 4 times out of 4 can be found doing 0.3 to the 4th power. That's 0.0081 or 0.81%. This calculator predictably outputs this when selecting the option neither A, B, C, nor D occurs, when inputting 70% values, or when selecting for all to occur when inputting 30% values. Anyway, calculator aside, by adding the 0.81 to our 7.56, we get 8.37. That is the percent chance for someone to be at least this lucky with inflicting confusion via hurricane at least three out of four times. Now, let's factor in me hitting myself in confusion, which is what I'm gonna do after all this math. 
When confusion is inflicted, it can be two to five turns. It's really more accurate to say one to four turns though, because on the turn that a Pokemon snaps out of confusion, they cannot hit themselves, but I'm not gonna be doing that here. Hitting yourself only has a 33% chance to activate each turn of being confused. My first turn, I hurt myself and I cannot snap out, which is easy because all you have to do is 0.33 times the current odds. But on the next turn, I snap out. How does this get factored? The odds of Altaria snapping out is 1 out of 4, but the odds of Altaria not hurting itself was 2 out of 3, which is also a fine outcome for us. Wouldn't this mean that there's an 11 out of 12 chance that I don't hurt myself? Sadly, no, and it's not that easy because our 2 out of 3 odds are conditional to us not getting the 1 out of 4 snap. First, let's bring this back to decimals. 0.25 and 0.66 repeating. Calculating this as a series of independent events looks like this. And we get 0.25. And wait a second, 25%? Are you telling me the odds of hitting yourself in confusion on the second turn are the same as your odds of breaking free on the second turn? To assure myself, I did a simulation where I confused the shuckle 12 times to test, and I found that this shuckle hit himself 3 out of 12 times on the second turn exactly. That's 25% of the time. Anyway, if we can take that 0.25 chance to get more lucky and add a 1 and then multiply it to 0.33 repeating to find that his odds were 0.4166 repeating or about a 42% chance to get at least this lucky with confusion hits. This might seem weird because I'm calculating the chance to not hit myself in confusion as opposed to counting the chance of me snapping out, which would be far more beneficial for him. However, he actually hits the confusion again, and if I hadn't snapped out but instead remained confused without hitting myself, then he wouldn't have been able to re-inflict confusion and reset the turn count and thusly I would have had a higher likelihood of snapping out on the next turn which would have given me two free turns of confusion as opposed to what will actually end up happening. These hypotheticals could probably be factored in some way but I don't think it's worth it for the scope of this video. Really, in this case, snapping out was better for him than me staying confused but not hitting myself for the entire duration. So let's move on to when he confuses me again on the next turn. And then I hit myself again a 33% chance. Talk about deja vu, huh? Anyway, this brings his almost 42% chance down to a 13% chance, roughly, to have gotten at least this lucky with confusion hits. Fortunately for me, I faint and we can move on from all this confusing confusion talk. Factoring this into the overall secondary effect odds, we take the 13%, dewey it into a decimal, and multiply it with the 0.0837 from his chance of inflicting confusion in the first place, to get 0.011625. Yep, you too have a 1.1% chance in your games to get more lucky with your secondary rolls than he is. So far. Next, he hits a sleep powder. Yes, immune moves can miss. Yes, I will count it, even though I'm immune. I already can hear someone crying, you can't count it if it didn't matter. Yeah, well, shut up, he lost. None of this technically mattered. If I stayed in, I would have been punished. By multiplying 0.75 with his accuracy, we get 0.061765725. On his next turn, he does not get a sludge bomb poison, so the odds of secondary luck go up a bit for him by multiplying his previous odds by 1.3. He is now just barely above 1.5% chance to be at least this lucky with secondary odds. And for the record, my poltergeist here would have killed with the highest roll possible. After that, I get another Poltergeist, but don't worry, my accuracy will be factored against his luck at the end of the video. Next up is the Meat and Potatoes, where he gets really lucky. It's a speed tie, baby. He has a 50% chance to win the speed tie and a 10% chance to freeze. He needs both. He is not Scarf, and Max Airstream kills him one-fourth of the time. First try, not that it matters because I don't count damage rolls, and the next turn I'll be fast enough to clean up anyway. He nets the 5% chance. His odds here are 0.00075 something something decimalized. But wait, there's more. I have a 20% chance to thaw this turn, and every turn, I don't get it in one. So that's his odds being multiplied by 0.8 every single turn. I don't get it in two, that's another 0.8. Next turn, I thaw just in time for the max airstream, which doesn't kill, sadly. 
I do lose the speed die though, which is fortunate for me because it means that he cannot refreeze me. Therefore, I do give him back the 5% odds that would have been him losing the speed tie and freezing. I recover up again because honestly, I want to see this dude get lucky. And he does. 10% chance to freeze, baby. I stay frozen, that's another 0.8 times the odds. And then, he misses a Draco. I hate him for this. I hate him with a burning passion. I don't hate him for getting lucky, I hate him for not hitting freeze dry. He had no reason to push Draco. In fact, it is good for him that he missed Draco because Draco Meteor does less than freeze dry. Freeze dry has 32 PP and to hit a Draco Meteor here would be nothing less than throwing the game due to the special attack drop that comes with it. If you want to know how to win this game, you need to max Hailstorm and hope you take me out before I defrost. In the video I lie, I raise his accuracy odds because he misses the Draco, but I shouldn't. It's fortunate that he missed. It gives him another chance to figure out his folly. This is Pokemon Showdown refusing to let him lose, and I will treat it as such. The real odds are not 11.9%, the real odds are 0.617%. And to be consistent, I will now raise his odds when he hits the next Draco, because now he has thrown it all away. His final move of the game, freeze dry, no freeze. Secondary odds are updated to 0.004%. Multiply that as a decimal with his accuracy, and you end up with 0.000030%. That's 1 in 3,293,832. You really can't ask for a better game than that. Of course, there's still more things to consider. First is his crits. There's a 1 in 24 chance to get a crit, so we are going to multiply his odds by 25 out of 24 to the power of how many crits he could have gotten, and then multiply 23 out of 24 to the power of how many crits that I could have gotten. I know that this isn't a perfect metric because, as VGC Wolfie once said, If you knock out your opponent's Pokemon before they attack, they can't critical hit you. But we're going to keep it simple here. He hit with attacking moves 15 times, and I hit with 4. Our formula is going to be 25 out of 24 to the 15th power, times 23 out of 24 to the 4th power. And that equals 0.00000047 something something other. Or 1 in 2,116,916. Finally, we multiply it against my accuracy. I had hit a Toxic, two Poltergeists, and a Steam Eruption. So that's one, plus the percentage shown in this as a decimal. And our current odds are... This. Or, 1 in 1,252,613. In case you wanted to know the odds with Draco Meteor reversed, or perhaps done normally, then you actually find that his odds bottom out at this number. After you factor in crits to that odds, it becomes this. And after my accuracy is counted into that, it tops out at 0.0013155997%, or 1 in 76,010. Still probably the luckiest game I've ever seen, although I guess when you put it that way, a 1 in 80,000 is only, yeah, still the luckiest game I've ever seen by far. Like I said though, I genuinely believe that missing Draco Meteor was a good thing. This is because the special attack drop is so significant that after two freeze dries or one max Hellstorm missing, he would take more damage if he hit the one Draco. Of course, he threw the game by hitting Draco again, but I'm very firm on the fact that missing Draco was a blessing for him because you would always want to trade that tiny amount of damage for having normal special attack going forward, unless you were about to like crit three times in a row, which just didn't happen and would have been inconceivably lucky. I really only counted Draco Meteor hitting as being beneficial because like it makes intuitive sense in the meme video and I didn't want to confuse anybody with like a bunch of text or make it seem like I'm just coping to try and make the numbers bigger or smaller I guess in this case but uh yeah. No shade to him by the way Slugma Guts is not my main account. I've actually already gotten two accounts above 1700 and his rating was 1385 before I beat him last week. In fact this Slugma Guts account is already at like 16 something right now and so if he was really lucky he would have just matched against someone else. 
Thanks for watching. My voice is so dead. I've really appreciated all the subscribers lately. Literally just in the 20 minutes that it took for me to record this video, I've already jumped like 10 subscribers. I love being able to look at my channel and seeing something like that happen. Even though I still only have like 70 subscribers, it's just so great. I love you guys so much and I'm having a lot of fun making these videos. I promise I have some banger vids coming out pretty soon. I promise it's going to be like nothing you've ever seen before in Pokemon YouTube. Love you guys. Thanks so much.